Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a quartic equation. We have x to the fourth power minus 16x minus 12 equals 0. I'll be presenting two methods, let's start with the first one. So for my first method, I'm going to factor this into two quadratics. Now I'm choosing the second one so that the x cubed term cancels out. So I need x squared minus ax plus c here. a, b, c are constants. So we're going to try to find the value of a, b, and c. So if you go ahead and distribute the whole thing, even though the x cubed term is going to cancel out, I just want to show you that it does. So let's go ahead and distribute everything. We get x to the fourth power minus ax cubed plus cx squared and then plus ax cubed minus a squared x squared plus acx plus bx squared minus abx plus bc. We should be getting nine terms. And then here, ax cubed and negative ax cubed cancel out. So let's go ahead and combine like terms. We have x to the fourth power and then we have cx squared and negative a squared x squared and b squared bx squared. So we can write that as c plus b minus a squared multiplied by x squared. And then for x terms we have these two. We can write it as ac minus ab times x and then finally we have bc. Now comparing this to our original quartic we notice that we notice that the coefficient of x squared must be 0 and the coefficient of x must be negative 16 and the constant term needs to be negative 12. So that gives us three equations and we have three variables so we should be able to solve this, right? So let's go ahead and write each of these equations. c plus b minus a squared equals 0. This gives us basically c plus b equals a squared. Let's write the second equation, ac minus ab is equal to negative 16. If we go ahead and factor out a here, we get a times c minus b equals negative 16. And from here, we can basically go ahead and isolate c minus b and write it as negative 16 over a. So that's kind of nice because notice that the b is going to cancel out when we add these two equations. Awesome. And the, the last one is bc equals negative 12. Awesome. Let's go ahead and use the first two equations first. So I'm going to rewrite it. c plus b is a squared. c minus b is negative 16 over a. And then I'm going to add these two equations. When I add them, b cancels out and I get 2c, or not 2c. Do you see what I see? All right. So now we can go ahead and multiply by 1 half or divide by 2. That gives us c equals a squared over 2 minus 8 over a. We can also make a common denominator, but it's, it's better if we leave it that way because I'll, I'll show you in a little bit why. So now we know that c plus b is a squared. So to find b from here, we can basically just find a squared minus c. And b is going to be a squared minus a squared over 2, which is a squared over 2 plus 8 over a. So it's just going to be the conjugate. Notice the relationship between b and c, the conjugate of c. Okay, they're related. And we also know that bc is negative 12. So we can go ahead and multiply these two expressions now and set the result equal to negative 12. So what happens if you multiply b and c together? So you have a squared over t, a squared over 2 plus 8 over a, multiply by a squared over 2 minus 8 over a, and this is equal to negative 12. Notice that these two terms will make a difference of two squares because they're conjugates. So we can write this as a to the fourth power divided by 4 minus 64 over a squared equals negative 12. Let's go ahead and uh, rename a squared. Let's call that d since we used abc. And this becomes d squared over 4 minus 64 over d equals negative 12. And let's go ahead and cross multiply or make a common denominator or just multiply by 4d. 
Let's make a common denominator. d cubed minus 64 times 4 is just going to be 256. And then that's going to be divided by 4d, and it's going to equal negative 12. So now let's go ahead and cross multiply. This gives us a cubic equation. Now, we could definitely use Cardano's or Tartaglia's or what's the third one? I forgot. Ferrero. Anyways, whoever found this formula and whoever has the rights to it, we can use the cubic formula, right? But let's go ahead and put everything on the same side first. You can use the cubic formula, but um, it's not hard to guess if you're looking for integer solutions. I mean, not necessarily, right? But we should expect some uh, nice solutions here. And to keep a long story short, I'll give you what it is. D equals 4 from here. And you can test it out, right? Easily. Okay. So d equals 4 satisfies this equation. Let's go ahead and backtrack. Uh, we said that a squared is equal to d. So that gives us two cases. a squared equals 4. a is 2 or negative 2. But trust me, it doesn't matter which value you use. At the end, you're going to get the same factors. And you can definitely test it for yourself. Okay, so I'm just going to go with a equals 2. It doesn't matter. Now, if a is equal to 2, what happens, right? Well, we know the value of b and c based on a. So, for example, c can be written as a squared over 2 minus 8 over a. And this is just going to be 4 over 2, which is 2, minus 8 over 2, which is 4. 2 minus 4 is equal to negative 2. So from here, we get c equals negative 2. And since we know that b c is negative 12, from here, we get b equals 6. So b equals 6 and c equals negative 2 and a equals 2. Let's put it all together in our original, original expression where we factor the quartic. So now this allows us to write our quartic as, remember the way we expressed it, x squared plus ax, which is plus 2x, plus b, which is 6. And then the other one is going to be x squared minus ax, which is minus 2x, plus c, and in this case, it's going to be minus 2. Set the whole thing equal to 0, and you're good to go. All right, let's go ahead and find the solutions by using the quadratic formula. I'm going to find this first. If x squared plus 2x plus 6 is equal to 0, it's easy. You can do it. You can also complete the square here, but you're going to get x equals negative 1 plus minus square root of 5i. Those are going to be complex solutions. And the other one is going to give you real solutions, and they're going to be uh, real um, values 1 plus minus root 3 so those are going to be the solutions and they're all valid uh, because this is a quartic and everything looks good and we didn't do any extraneous stuff let's go ahead and talk about the second method obviously second method is shorter but something that doesn't work all the time all right so this is a special quartic so we have this expression and this can be factorable uh, or yeah it is factorable by using difference of two squares but we have to Tweak it a little bit. Here's how uh, we're going to do it. I'm going to add 4x squared and then break down the negative 12 into 4 minus 16. And that 16x, 16x is going to work nice. Anyways, I'm just going to add 4 here. And then the rest is going to follow. Minus 4x squared minus 16x minus 16. Awesome. Now, from here we get something nice. This is x squared plus 2 quantity squared and this is 4 minus 4 times x squared plus 4x plus 4 which is another perfect square perfect so now this can be written as x squared plus 2 squared minus 2 times x plus 2 and the whole thing is squared awesome now remember we were setting this equal to 0 that just means that we have squares on both sides let's go ahead and write it that way I have x squared plus 2 squared equals 2 times x plus 2 squared Ice brackets to express the you know out, outer square. So from here, we can write two solutions because if a squared equals b squared, then maybe I shouldn't use a handy here. Uh, how about uh, y and z? Okay, so if y squared equals z squared, this implies two things: either y is equal to z or y is equal to negative z. Okay, you could also find out by factoring, right? If you turn it into a difference of two squares. Anyways, so this gives us x squared plus two is equal to 2 times x plus 2, which is 2x plus 4. And from here we get x squared minus 2x minus 2, right? Uh, I mean plus 2 equals 0. Okay. 
Uh, I keep changing it. It's supposed to be minus two. Okay, never mind. I was thinking about like for some reason four minus two, but it's supposed to be um, two minus four. Okay, so x squared minus two x minus two. And obviously this is going to give you the solutions. One plus minus root three for x. And the other equation comes from negating the right hand side or, or the left hand side doesn't matter, but it's just going to be negative two x minus four. And from here you get x squared plus two x plus six equals zero. And this is the one that has the complex solutions and they're going to be negative one plus minus root five i so these are going to be the solutions and this brings us to the end of this video i thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed it please let me know don't forget to comment like and subscribe i'll see you tomorrow with another video until then be safe take care and bye bye